Okay, my name is Eric Narecki, I'm the chair of the OpenX AL and OpenSLES working groups. And I'm going to give you an introduction to OpenX AL, OpenSLES. And we're also going to take a look at a few tips and tricks for programming a 3D audio for games. But first of all, when we take a look at today's consumer requirements for the mobile market, the thing that's really driving the mobile market today is rich media applications and the UI. Consumers, they want to be able to have a device that they can really engage with, that they enjoy, that they can have a vivid screen, lots of colors, play games, and so forth. They're looking for an enhanced user experience. They like to play games, they want theater quality audio playback. They're looking for streaming services, and uh, including in that is, of course, mobile TV. And they, they buy a lot of uh, third-party applications. So one of the things that also drives the uh, smartphone market today is the availability of third-party applications for that specific device. And consumers are expected to purchase $35 million U.S. dollars for, of mobile applications by 2014. For us as application developers, that's an enormous market to uh, uh, that we can take part of. So when we develop applications for um, the mobile market, we want simple app, simple GUIs or uh, sorry, simple APIs to use. So uh, we want a use case driven design. I have something that I want to do. I want to do it fairly simple. I want to spend my time doing the complex things in my game, not trying to figure out how the underlying system works. And I want a complete and comprehensive feature set so that all of the functionality that I want to use is there. I don't have to try to figure out ways to do it myself. I want things to be portable, and I want predictable functionality so that I can move my applications to multiple types of devices without having to uh, without having to spend my time for it. I often get asked, why did Kronos create multimedia APIs? There are plenty of multimedia frameworks out there that you can use in mobile devices. But one of the problems with open source frameworks is that um, when you integrate a framework into a device, you tend to change its functionality. And you think, of, I can do this a little bit better, I can do that a little bit different, this fits into the rest of my uh, system a little bit better. So every implementation of, a, of an open source framework tends to be unique. For application developers, that means that you have to spend your time not only porting it from one system to another, but trying to figure out those little things that are different. For the Kronos APIs, we provide the conformance test to make sure that each and every device responds to the application in the same way. Now, the conformance test for the multimedia APIs, it doesn't mean that when I play a video stream that I'm going to get the same quality audio and video each and every time. But what it does mean is that as far as contract with the application, I get the same behavior from the device each and every time. We also have the GPL license to deal with, with the open source frameworks. And, uh, Kronos, we provide an IP framework for uh, conformant implementations. And we give you a predictable set of functionality that is not dependent on each implementation. So when we look at the application access layer for multimedia in, um, in the Kronos APIs, we have OpenSLES, which is the um, sound library for embedded systems. And OpenMax AL, which is for accelerated multimedia application layer. And when we developed these APIs, initially there was uh, lower level access that was standardized. And we do have OpenMax IO for that. But the problem with OpenMax IO is that while it's designed to run very low to the hardware and it gives you a lot of power, it's extremely complex. And as an application developer, you really don't want to try to figure out the media chain in each and every de uh, device, how to set it up. You just want to play your media. You, want, you have a clip, you want to play it, you have a background sound, all you want to do is get it to the speaker so the, the user can do it. 
And OpenMax IO is too complex for that. And that's why we have the application level APIs. So with OpenMax IO and OpenSLEs, we provide simple high-level multimedia APIs for playback and recording use cases. And we give you the cross-platform portability so that you don't have to figure out how each device works. OpenMax AO is focused on streaming media, media playback, and media recording. It allows for you to do the very simple use cases. I have a video clip, you just want to play it, send it to the screen, I'm done. It also gives you a full range of video effects and control, including if you want to manipulate the playback rate, uh, do post processing or image manipulation. So that you can do advanced effects for um, captured images using the camera, for instance. And that uh, you can edit video before sending it to your friends. So, OpenMax AL really is designed to give you a, um, a simple way to do video and uh, camera functionality and allows you to spend your time developing your applications. And it does, we have designed it with a whole set of uh, multimedia functionality. Open SLES, uh, we, we have more powerful mobile audio. And uh, with Open SLES, we introduce concepts like an equalizer, 3D effects, Doppler, virtualization, and so forth. It, with Open SLES, you get uh, access to the rich audio functionality that is in most devices, so that you can do a much more uh, uh, vivid audio for your applications. And the great thing here is that with a mobile device, you actually have more control of the audio than you do in a home theater system, because the user, most of the time, is going to be wearing earphones. And with the earphones, you, are, you have complete control of the audio that the user receives. You don't have that in a home theater, so you can actually create theater quality audio in a mobile device. When we look at 3D audio, 3D audio is really what enhances a, a mobile game. When you're playing games, you have the screen in front of you, and if you play games without audio, they're, they're okay, but when you turn on the audio, it really richens up the experience for the user. And, uh, OpenSLES is designed to be a, a companion to OpenGLES for and really enhancing that 3D experience for the user. And like OpenMax AL, OpenSLES is designed for implementation by either a hardware or a software solution. So when we designed both OpenMax AL and OpenSLES, we took a look at what is the most common use case. And for both audio and for multimedia, it's the playback use case. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to do the simple specification of where does the audio or the multimedia come from. Is it a file? Does it come from the camera? Does it come from, uh, uh, from the application itself? Is it stored in memory? So you specify just the location where that, uh, where that clip is. Then you have the player object which gives you the functionality of play, uh, pause, stop, etc. And then you tell it where it's going. That's, that's all you have to do. OpenMax AL and OpenSLES, they were designed with a common architecture so that it's easy for application developers to use the functionality of one or the other or the two combined. So as you can see up here, that we have th th these are the actual um, graphs of, uh, of the API design. So if you're building an application to play audio, you specify the URI, and you can do that using either OpenMax AL or um, OpenSLES. You specify the player object, your output mix, which has varying kinds of controls depending on whether you're using AL or SL and then the output device. And uh, to control in your entire session, you create your engine object. And those are the objects you need for playback. You have your interfaces, so that you can get your uh, metadata instruction. You have your seat in your volume. You have your equalizer virtualization. And that gives you pretty much full control of 
is simple use of playback tapes. When we look at the functionality, the areas of functionality that OpenSLE as an OpenMax AO provides, we have the uh, common simple audio playback, which is here in the center. It gives you audio playback, audio recording, and basic MIDI functionality. That functionality is common to both APIs, so you can, you can choose which API suits your application better or what's available in that device for that type of functionality. If you're getting into the uh, video playback, radio image capture display, you're looking at OpenMax AO on this side here. And if you're getting into the advanced audio, then you're looking at using OpenSLES. To reduce fragmentation in these, we've provided profiles. So OpenMax AO provides the player and the recorder profiles. This allows you to develop an app, a device, for instance, that only does playback, that does not have recording functionality, or you can have both functionality. For OpenSLES, we provide the phone, the music, and the game profile depending on the functionality that the device supports. As an application developer, I can query the, these in the device to find out what is supported. So that if I'm looking for something that, that has the audio effects and 3D audio, I know I'm looking for the 3D, uh, for the game profile. If the game profile is not there, I know that I can fall back and use the sampler phone profile that that's provided. So we do this so that to make it easier for you as an application developer to really target what you're looking for. Yeah. And the, uh, of course, the ultimate device is going to have all three of the OpenSLES and the full range of OpenXAL functionality. So when we look at OpenSLES and OpenXAL, they are two independent APIs. If we combine them, you'd be looking at a 1,200-page specification. That's a bit daunting to read. And plus, there's a lot of need, there is the need to have one or the other in a device depending on the type of device. So there is no dependency between the APIs, but they are compatible and they are designed to work together. And the working groups work together to ensure that these APIs do work well together. They have the same API architecture, but they do have, also have the distinct set of functionality which I'd like to use this as the complete multimedia use case. You can do, this is a device that supports both OpenMax AL and OpenSLES and the uh, new EGL stream extension that the uh, OpenMax AL group just passed. So, what this allows you to do is take in a video stream, for instance, through OpenMax AL. And with that video stream, you can do with your standard multimedia processing. So you play the video stream, you split it up into the audio portion and the video portion. The video stream, you want to treat it on the GPU do some interesting effects with it. So you set it up and send it to the EGL stream. The EGL stream is then taken into a uh, GL, yes, uh, a uh, GL texture external OX uh, texture. Now, once it's put into a texture, it can be treated as any other OpenGL yes, texture. So the application can use that to combine with other OpenGL ES functionality. Put that on an EGL surface, and now you can use that to draw to wherever you want, just like any other uh, surface. For uh, OpenSLES, you can take the audio output from uh, OpenMax AL, you pipe it to the OpenSLES system so that you can. Uh, um, mix it and you can add 3D functionality using the DSP and then add that to the standard output. So you can really, so you can use the entire multimedia system, both audio and graphics, to, to make a rich media application and really enhance the functionality of your application. <laughs>